When it comes to bad reality shows, I don't think there's as good of a subgenre as insert group of people pretending to hunt something that isn't there. For example, Ghost Adventures, which we watched a couple months ago, was one of my favorite videos to make, and not because I committed to the bit and went to Boston and stayed in the exact hotel room they had on the show. That that was that added. But those shows are just perfect cringe and so easy to make fun of. And the show we're gonna be watching today is very similar to Ghost Adventures. If I actually had to describe it, I would say it's a mixture of Duck Dynasty, Ghost Adventures, and Scooby-Doo. Trust me, that will make sense later on. The show in question is Mountain Monsters. Now, this is one of those shows that have been suggested a billion times. I finally got around to watching it and I was like, oh yeah, this is Perfect. The premise is simple. We just follow a group of hillbillies as they hunt mountain monsters in the name of the show. All right, guys, the next creature we're going to investigate is one we have a history with. We're going to Cherokee County, North Carolina, and we're going after the Cherokee Death Cat. Hell yes, let's get after it. I'm excited. So this episode starts off like they always do. They're sitting in the truck talking about what they're going to be hunting for on this episode, but the image is just so funny. Like, it looks like this guy's driving his dad and his uncle into town to buy beer because their licenses got taken away. This creature means a lot to me. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I've got Cherokee blood coursing through my veins. Yep. I'm very proud of my Native American roots. You damn well should be, Buck. That's exactly right. No one talks about having Cherokee in their blood more than someone who is three or more generations removed. <laughs> so these guys here are the main cast, consisting of Buck, Huckleberry, and Jeff. I guess he didn't really do anything to get a nickname. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Buck is like the main guy. He does all the talking. He explains what they're gonna be doing, what they did last episode, yada yada. And then Huckleberry is just repeating everything he's saying, kind of like a hype man, just saying like, yep, uh-huh. Hell yes, let's get after it. And then you've got Jeff in the front seat, who I don't think knows what's going on. He's just like, wait, I... so we're not going to the store? <laughs> now, whenever we see Huckleberry on the screen, it always says security, like his role is security. And I think that just means he's the one with an assault rifle. <laughs> so now it's time to talk to an eyewitness and get a first-hand account of this Cherokee death cat. See what's going on. It's nice being back down in North Carolina. Huck and Jeff got awful excited though. They love going to the beach. Only problem is, is come to the beach, Jeff looks like a polar bear wearing Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn, good on Buck. That joke absolutely killed. Dad was in front of me on that little bike and he just stopped dead. And suddenly he got up off his bike and he turned around and looked at me. And he said, did you see that? And I said, see what, Dad? And he said, that big cat. And he said, son, that cat was eight or nine foot long. Said it was huge. Dad. Wait, did, did he not see it? Is he just going off of what his dad saw? His dad that, mind you, was right next to him. So if he saw something, he should have seen it too. <laughs> also, I don't think Jeff has written down anything on that pad. I think that's his only job and he's just so captivated with the story. He Do, said, did you, did you see it? It jumped, it jumped from this log to that tree. Yeah, my papa told me he saw the biggest cat he ever seen in his life. It jumped right over that log, up in that tree, I'd say about 30 feet. Damn, that is crazy. But uh, you, you didn't see it yourself? Nope, but my pa sure was shooken up after he saw it. Oh, okay. Do uh, you think maybe we can Talk to him about it? Sure, go right ahead. Standing right here. God damn it, he's fucking nuts. I did not shook up. For his dad to be shook up like this, living here all of his life, he's seen an impressive creature that scared the hell out of him. Also, I love these horror movie sounds that they just use all of the time. Based on Bubba's story, this is a perfect spot for us to get out here tonight and do an investigation and find out if this is Cherokee death cat. Based on Bubba's story, of his daddy's story, it sounds like this is fixing to be the Cherokee death cat. Maybe. I don't, it doesn't fucking matter. We ain't gonna catch it. After talking to Bubba today, we took that measurement. That cat left uphill 55 feet. Maybe? According to Bubba's dad's story? God, I still can't believe they're going off of Bubba's dad's story. Like, he's not even a witness. He was standing right there. Start working back and forth, see if we can find any sign that the Cherokee Death Cat's still in this area. Sounds good to me. I think at this point, Jeff knows that they're not going to the store. Now, when I first saw this, I was wondering what they're going to do if they encounter this Cherokee Death Cat, because it, it sounds like it messed them up. But then I saw that they are absolutely strapped. Well, not Jeff. He's just got a notepad and a flashlight. But the other guys, they... They're ready. Hold it for a minute. What's wrong, Jeff? I got something glowing right in the bottom of that tree right there. About 20 yards. Oh, check this out. There's a peep oh. post. 
Probably just Bubba taking a piss in his backyard. <laughs> this is fresh pee, dude. Oh, wow. Smell it. Oh yeah, look at those claw marks. Now what they're about to do is what they do on Ghost Adventures that I mentioned in my last video, where they just tell you what you're seeing and hearing. Like they'll show something very vague and then draw on the screen be like, it, it's it's this though, because we drew it. Dad, cool. It was just here, wasn't it? We just found a scent post. You can see claw marks almost seven feet in the air. Dude, keep it down, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, we definitely got a cat in here, don't we? Without a doubt. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the absurdity of the show. Like, they're all going out in the woods, in the mountains, in the middle of the night, with all their guns and lights and cameras, just because Bubba's dad saw something one time. <laughs> Jeff, you got anything on the floor? Jeff? Huck, we lost Jeff. Where the hell did he go? <laughs> Jeff, is that you? <laughs> you scared the shit out of us. Jeff, talk to me, dude. What's wrong? Talk to us. I need to get back to the truck, and I need to be left alone for a little bit, okay? All I wanted to do was just go to the goddamn store, and you guys brought me into the mountains to look for monsters. Right now, Jeff is beyond being shook up. Easy now. Easy, easy Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, easy now. Easy, Jeff. He's running into trees, he's looking all round up in the air. Because you guys are in the woods, in the middle of the night. And he's an old man. Everyone in the show except for Buck is an old man. Guys, we got a ditch here we're going to cross. Come on. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. I'll take your time. Easy now. And now you'd think that Jeff, being an old man that is out of shape in the woods at night after just being so spooked, you would maybe help him get over this ditch. But no, they just, they're like, eh, you, you got it. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, man, his fangs must be that long. I understand. Jeff said when we got separated, that death cat came out of the tree right on top of him, so close he could smell its breath. Dude, you are three feet away from me. It is just us. Right now, Jeff's pissed off at us. I think the best thing we can do is get Jeff out of these woods Come on, Jeff. and try to talk to him in the morning. I love how Jeff is upset at them and their solution is like, ah, we'll, we'll leave him alone. He's just kind of being a pussy right now. Today, me and Huck's gonna go meet up with Jeff. We need to see how he's doing. He don't look much better, does he? Did they just drop him off in that thing and leave him there overnight? Last night was a huge mistake. Yep. I'm willing to admit that. Yep. And you know what? That's what makes us a good team. Does that mean that maybe you guys will let me have a gun now? No, Jeff. We're never gonna give you a gun. But you know what? Notepad. Oh man, you guys bought me a brand new notepad? No, it's your notepad. You just dropped it last night when you were crying in the woods. Now we did talk about something else last night. Huck, tell me your idea. I love it. Huh. I love it. I like it. <laughs> Pretty simple solution, Jeff, right? With that rope tied around Jeff, it's just like being at the county fair, watching those kids walk their homes. Okay, we'll give them this. The image of them walking Jeff around like their pet on a leash is pretty fucking funny. William Wild Bill, need to get started on that track. We know this creature's out. So after finding nothing because of Jeff's little stunt, we're gonna check in with the other half of the group, the guys that are responsible for building the traps. Those guys are Willie and Wild Bill, and they just do this bit here that goes on way too long of Wild Bill just eating a lot of snacks and his belly is sticking out of his tight fucking shirt. How does a guy with so few teeth in his mouth eat that much food? My goodness. Mike? No, I'm good. I ate this morning. I don't know what's going on right here, but look like you've got a couple extra pounds down around now. Are you serious? And that goes on for about a minute and a half. What they don't show us is the six monsters that Bill just drank before filming because, God, he is a lot. I'm having a few stocks to get energized. Brother Willie's saying <laughs> old midsection's bulging out. But now as we check back in with the guys, we're going to try and make some more progress into them hopefully catching this monster. But first, another eyewitness. And I heard this very, very loud roar. I thought, wow, is that a jet? You know, I mean, it just, it, it was a roar. I never heard it anymore, so I went ahead and went back to bed. But the next afternoon is what got me. And I was like, what the hell is that noise? So the next morning I went to town and I saw Bubba's daddy, and he told me. So that's when I pulled my cell phone out and started filming. Really? Yes. The barn? Yeah, that's a pretty good sized barn. <laughs> Well, I'm sold. I will say at least this guy is somewhat of a better witness than Bubba, because even though he didn't see the Cherokee Death Cat, he at least heard it or 
whatever sound effect they got on the internet. You could definitely see some kind of big creature's been in here. It could be the death cat, but right now, we're not sure. And don't worry, that is all they need. So now they're pretty sure that the death cat is huddled up inside this barn, even though they just saw this guy's video on his phone. It could have been days, maybe weeks old, but they are sure that the cat is in the barn. And they make a big deal out of trying to find the landowner, which they do, as you would expect, walk around the property at night with guns and hope something happens. Sure. What's wrong? What you got, Buck? Hang on a second. We're working our way back up towards this corn. All of a sudden, Buck turns around and hauls ass back down to that rock. Okay, we're using the term haul ass a little loose, aren't we? What do you see? We've seen that barn before. Yeah, on the video that that guy showed us. That's the whole reason we're here. So now they do a callback to an episode I have not seen, where they apparently found this video of this monstrous cult-like activity. There was a film on the wall. Oh, you ready? Wait, what was that? Oh, you ready? Oh no, they're hunting Chris Angel Mind Freak. This is part of the quest for Spearfinger. Chase these creatures, and you will find the Spearfinger. Wow. This is not a coincidence. I really didn't think I would have to, like, do research and read up on the lore of Monster Hunters to be able to understand this episode, but we're just gonna move on regardless. At least I don't quite feel alone when it comes to not knowing what's going on, because I'm pretty sure me and Jeff are in the same boat. We got to get a hold of that man that owns this property. We were already gonna look for the landowner, then you made us walk down this hill, you started saying all that weird shit, and now we're walking back up the hill, and we're gonna try and find the landowner. We were already doing it. God damn it, Buck. I don't like showing up to a man's house after dark, but guys, I don't see where we have an option. You could just wait until the next day. <laughs> I think the best thing we can do is just go back to the truck, guys. Yeah, come back here early in the morning. Ho! 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 Oh, there's a light. Good job, Huckleberry. That is a light. What with all the lights and everything? These guys have cameras. They're filming us. We're on a TV show. TV show? What TV show? Uh, it's called Mountain Monsters. I love him having to explain this show to him. Like, even he knows it's nuts. We've got our cameraman here. They're filming. We're doing a TV show. It's... It's called Mountain Monsters. Get the hell off my property. Yep, that makes sense. Let's go, guys. I can't, I can't find my cross. What's the problem? I can't find my cross. I went through my whole truck, looked through my gear. That one you carry every time we go out? Yeah. We're getting ready to head out on our hunt. Jeff lets us know he's lost that cross that his wife gave him. Now, I don't know the whole story behind this, but I know he carries it on every hunt we do. I have no idea the story about that cross. I'm pretty sure he's told me like 10 or 15 times. I just never listen. Huck, Willie, and Bill, they're going to go over and see if they can't find a way down to that old barn. You'll find it, Jeff, bro. I'm going to take Jeff right over to where we did our first night investigation and see if we can't find that cross. So basically, we almost had a smooth operation with the whole team all going in with one objective, but then Jeff lost his necklace. I cannot imagine any problems arising in the future because of this. That's straight up and down. We just got to the edge. Huck said it was straight up and down. He's not lying. You'd have to have a billy goat to get down over there. I didn't know anyone could be louder than Buck. But this guy sure as hell takes the cake. Jeff, don't you dare apologize, brother. I know that cross means the world to you, man. Oh, you don't even know. You said your wife gave that to you, didn't you? Yeah. You ever heard the story? I've never heard the story. Well, I've told you about 10 or 12 times. She pulled him out one at a time. She said, I love you all so much that I want you to have something to remember me the rest of your life. And we just sat there and looked at that cross. And we looked at her and we all started bawling. And I know Buck is just thinking like, God damn it, I... I'd rather be the fun group. I gotta hear this shit. When she's going, I'm gonna have my two sons, and I'm gonna have that cross. I wasn't listening to a thing Jeff was saying. All I could think about was that death cat is still out there. Now this tender emotional moment is the only break we get in this show from horror movie sounds and hillbillies yelling over each other. So I will take it. Lion sound like a little kitten drinking milk. Damn it, Bill, stop with the quips. You know, guys, if I'm being honest, I feel kind of bad. They're out there treating this like a serious thing. They're all wearing camo. They're dressing for the part. And I'm just sitting here wearing my stupid city clothes. Editor, do the Ray William Johnson equals three transition now.
Hey, do the goddamn transition. That's more like it. So now we're gonna check back in with Jeff and Buck, and something happens that, honestly, you just gotta see it to believe it. You see this? Look at all those limbs leaned up against that turret. Yeah, it's just some sticks are kind of stacked up against some trees. I, I hope there's an explanation for that. Hey, Buck, we just found a good way to get down to that barn straight over this high wall. Honestly, the most thrilling and potentially dangerous thing they've done this entire episode is try to safely get down this steep hill. If you guys found a place to repel, why don't you and Bill go ahead and drop down? Send Huck over here with us. I could use a hand. Meanwhile, Bill, we're gonna head back and get our gear. And then now they decide they're going to split up even more by for some reason sending Huckleberry to go check on Jeff and Buck, even though they all have walkie-talkies and they should be able to communicate fine. Buck just radioed over. He said they're getting some action over there, and Jeff's starting to freak out on him. So at this point in time, they have split up into three groups and found nothing. They're pretty much at the same spot that they were last night when Jeff got spooked. Oh my gosh. Look. There it is. I can't believe it. Well, that was easy. Yeah, we finally found it. I've just sat and looked at it for hours, just thinking of my wife and all the good times we had when she was able to get out and around. Oh, God damn it, he's getting into it again. Hold it up, hold up. I just had movement right down there. Stay in close. Something that's even scarier than the monsters they're hunting are these shots that we get here and there of them on the night vision camera, and they just look ghoulish. There's something out here, and it's not the death cat. Now guys, real quick, I wanna not thank the sponsor for this video because there's not one, but I do wanna say two things real quick. Number one, Patreon is back up. I did have one for a while, but then I kind of fell behind on doing the Patreon stuff. I can barely get a video out a week, okay? But now it's back up, there's one tier, don't feel inclined to. If you got five bucks burning a hole in your pocket and you want it to go to me, go right ahead. If you do subscribe to the Patreon, you will get ad-free videos, you'll get videos that have been taken down for copyright or like age-restricted, stuff like that. You get credits at the end of my videos, that's cool, maybe. But that's pretty much it. Don't feel like you need to. Uh, do whatever you want, you're an adult. And number two, I have a P.O. box now. A lot of people have been asking and they can send me babes. You can now. Send me other stuff too. If you make clothes, send it. If it doesn't look like shit, I might wear it. If you make art, I'll put it in the background if it looks good. Just don't send anything weird, please. But yeah, just those two announcements. Uh, back to the video. Okay, we just came up on this fence line. We're not too far from you. Did uh, Huck catch up with you there? No, I'm very, I thought he stayed with you. Okay, here I go thinking way too hard about this. Didn't they just say, oh, Huckleberry's probably like halfway here by now? I'm worried about Huck. And uh, you don't worry about Huck. We'll catch him on his way here and save him a few steps. And then now Buck's saying like, I thought he stayed with you. What is it, Buck? Are you behind all of this? Are you the Cherokee death cat? Of course, as they're about to do literally anything that would get them closer to maybe seeing this death cat, Something's got to happen and they're going to be like, oh, we we got to go back. We can't go now. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and unhook and start towards us. We're going to start working your way. We got to find Huck. Is that a fire? Is that in the barn? What the? So now shit is just kind of going off the rails. It still will after this too, but the barn now has a fire inside. They're trying to see what's going on by everyone asking what's going on at least twice. Why is there a fire in there? What's going on with that barn? Before then cutting to Jeff, who still doesn't know what's going on. What the hell's going on? And then after 42 minutes of this episode that I watch, I realize it ended on a cliffhanger. So we are now going into episode two that I also had to watch. So now they start to realize that Huckleberry is lost, which is kind of weird. He's not someone that would get lost in this kind of situation. So something had to have happened. And Huckleberry said he knew where you guys was at, and he headed right down through there. That's just the opposite direction. That's why we didn't see him. Yeah, he just went the wrong way. So they're just like, oh, we'll go that way, I guess. Willie said Huck went to the left whenever he came looking for me and Jeff. That's the exact opposite direction. Also, so far, no mention of the fire in the barn stuff. Maybe later. All right, um, let's spread out through here and start working and see if we can't find yeah. which direction he went. And once again, they are splitting up. God, this episode should be like 20 minutes if they just didn't keep fucking up all the time. Also, are their walkie-talkies dead? Like, is that not an option? If it was, just say that. Just say, oh, walkie-talkies ain't working. Boom, now we know it's not an option. Why don't you guys go get the side-by-side? -side? Because if he's in there, then we'll have a lot better chance of him seeing us or hearing us. Hey, Huck, 
Huckleberry! It's in here with us. I think I just got a glimpse of the Cherokee Death Cat. It looks like it's got four wheels, and it sounds like five hillbillies all yelling my name. I, the only thing I can think is maybe in his mind he thought he was taking a shortcut. Hey! Whoa! What the? What is that? What the hell is it? Who in the hell? What, what, what the hell is that? So at this point in their search for the Cherokee Death Cat, they have stumbled upon a lot of stuff, like that barn with the fire inside that has links to that scary cult video. And now this fucking scarecrow guy. This is what I meant about the Scooby-Doo shit. Like, it's just different monsters popping up every week, and some from before, too. They're gonna go over and yank off his mask, and it's gonna be Huckleberry. <laughs> Look like a man dressed up like a scarecrow! This guy's observational skills are off the charts. Yeah. Hold, hold up, up, hold up, listen, listen, shh, 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 listen. You hear that? I hear something running down listen, through listen, there. Listen, listen. Shh, listen. Also, nobody has better hearing than Buck, because no matter how many hillbillies are all yelling over each other, he can always at the right moment be like, Shit, wait! Did you guys hear that? Now, if you can't really tell what's going on here, neither can I. We can hear some noise up ahead, it's just a few rows over. That has to be that little creep of a scarecrow. We're gonna slip in there, and I'm gonna get some revenge. Revenge for what? Pushing you? There's something over there about 30 feet. I can hear it move. You just stay close to me. So now the guys are gonna try and find this scarecrow guy and get revenge after his vicious attack of Buck. And I think I know what's gonna happen. You've got them thinking that the scarecrow is like 10 feet away. You got Huckleberry thinking that the death cat is 10 feet away. They're both, of course, talking about each other. I hope they don't just start blasting each other away. <laughs> I feel bad for whatever farmer's cornfield is just being ravaged by these guys right now. What the hell? God damn it, who stabbed me? Listen, you ain't gonna believe what we had happen to us tonight. We get our ass hand to us by a big old scarecrow. God damn it, match my volume. We're having a conversation. Do you hear how loud we're talking? Let's get out of here, get some rest. First thing in the morning, we need to hit the ground running. So now after everything we've seen, everything they've been through all like 70 minutes, I'm pretty sure into this that we're at, they're gonna regroup the next morning and figure out what their game plan is. Still, basically where they were at the beginning. Let me remind you, all they have to do is just get down this steep hill and get to the barn. But they have not been able to do that yet. They have split up so many times, the, the, the scarecrow man, everything is just falling apart. And I guess some time has passed and the trap guys were able to go back and finish their trap only 28 minutes into the second episode of a 42 minute show. We are finally where they were in the beginning again. But hold on, Buck heard something again. Hold up, listen, listen, listen. I hear water. Is this the barn? I can't tell, Buck. Let's get a little closer. And now they finally reached the barn. But oh wait, it's not the right barn. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This isn't the barn. Which, it's such a waste of time because after seeing this, not five seconds go by and they see the correct barn. Like, they could have just cut out all that other stuff. There's a fire in there. What? There's a fire inside that house. What the hell's a fire doing in there? This wasn't here. It was at this moment where I realized it is dangerously close to the end of the episode, with nothing being answered yet. So far I've watched 84 minutes of this god-awful show, and there's still nothing answered. I thought maybe, okay, the third episode is gonna have some kind of answers, and I could just condense that. Nope, it's just a different episode. But this all goes into the overarching thing about the, the spear finger, spear fish, whatever, and as I was debating watching those, I thought, you know what? I don't think anyone cares. I certainly don't, but I hope you guys did enjoy what we were able to find out, which is still nothing, but I think we got some goofs and some laughs out of it. But yeah, if you did enjoy, leave a like rating down below, comment, share with your friends, it all helps me out a ton. If you're new here and you did enjoy, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my uploads. With all that being said, thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.